and welcome to Off Grid Earth. We're in the Hunter Valley again today, sparkling day, Easter weekend, and we're at another beautiful off grid property. I've got Paul with me, and um, Paul owns the property, um, Furnances Creek Farm, Farm and, uh, and he's recently gone off grid. Long time solar advocate. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we started with a, um, a, a grid connected solution about eight years ago, and uh, I guess um, we got to the point where we were thinking that off-grid was certainly the um, the way to go, and uh, as a consequence, after uh, probably quite a, quite a few conversations, we uh, we settled on um, putting in what we call our solar shed here. This property here is uh, <laughs> is uh, your future. Uh, this property here is going to be your future getaway or living area, is that the idea? That's certainly the idea and uh, us and the horses are going to be <laughs> obviously living in close proximity by the look of it. Um, we're, um, we're going to move into um, this house uh, um, at some stage and I guess that's, um, that's up for uh, negotiation with the wife but the, the plan was uh, to try and make it as uh, self-sustainable as possible and uh, the soul has done a uh, been a big step in that uh, that direction. So Paul and Sharon did a really excellent job at making a, a purpose-built structure uh, to house their equipment shed. So this was a uh, uh, stable for the horses and it's really well built, nice construction and it's uh, pitched at 30 degrees, optimum at north. So a really good outcome, it'll, it'll serve the purpose for this off-grid system for the life of the array. The equipment shed is has been built underneath the uh, stable roof here and that creates that little bit of air buffer in there so it's a really handy a really handy thing to have so that it hasn't got the direct su sun on on top of the equipment shed um, the equipment shed at the moment is missing a whirly bird you probably still still should have some mechanical ventilation um, however uh, it's a really nice little setup so in here we have uh, 7.44 kilowatts trina uh, solar on the roof and inside the shed, six kilowatt Fronius, a Victron Quattro 10, and two BYD 7.5s uh, to make up 15.4 uh, kilowatt hours of total storage. Just about to hit. You can see on the, on the color control in here, batteries are just about to hit 100%. It's probably uh, it's pretty early in the morning still. And now the, the Quattro will start to frequency shift the power coming in from the solar inverter and restrict that power inflow because it's got nowhere to go. They're not using it in the house at the moment. Uh, but a really nice tidy little setup. Nice equipment area, nice and cool, purpose built. It's just spot on for, um, it's spot on for an off-grid setup. Plenty of sun, no restriction, no shade. Uh, and you can see we're probably only about, uh, well, it's about 80 metres back to the house and uh, that cable, that AC cable run can be um, effectively calculated by the side electrician who can work out the appropriate size cable to mitigate any voltage drop. So, um, really good little setup. But your motivations, to, I mean, there's power nearby. I mean, we've got power poles around. So yeah. what, was, what was the motivation to, to have an off-grid system when you could have gone on grid? Well, look, I, I could say that uh, we, we missed, um, we missed putting a connection in um, many years ago, um, but these days the, uh, the capital cost of uh, a grid connect has um, just gone through the, uh, the roof and when we looked at um, the whole equation, it, uh, it was kind of the right time to go to a system that was um, completely independent. So um, it was a fairly easy decision in the uh, end once we had all the facts. Yeah, 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 so it, it, the economics stacked up. But yep. you've, you're, you're a bit more philosophically that way inclined as well. Yeah, well, it's um, it's certainly been um, my... Um... <laughs> she lo she lo loves the off-grid system too. <laughs> it's certainly always been my intent to um, uh, to use as much um, of the uh, the sun as we could to uh, to power the operation. And um, you know, we, um, we've learnt to live... I know pretty um, economically, I suppose, as far as um, power use is concerned. So we kind of thought we fitted the profile of um, uh, of an off-grid um, um, user. 
So Paul, you've got a nice little view up here. It's uh, just enough elevation to look down over your valley. Mm. And uh, and you were saying that this this building that you've, you've, you've built here, it's pretty much built the way you wanted to build it without necessarily taking into account any particular feature with regard to the off-grid system. The off-grid system really just melded to what you required at this at this site. Yeah, look for for a good while there we um, we weren't um, sure we were going to be um, off grid, um, and the design was wasn't really predicated on us having um, uh, a particular power source. I mean, we've always been energy conscious, so we um, we looked at things that were going to be um, efficient. Um, I, I suppose the biggest compromise is. Um, and I don't view them as a compromise at all. I mean, instantaneous gas, uh, hot water, just seemed like a sensible mm. um, way for us to go. Um, pretty well everything else was uh, the way we would have um, designed it, whether it was on or off grid. The main loads are that you're going to have, you know, water pump, you've got a bioseptic system down here, yep. you've got fans, let's stick our nose inside a little bit, um, just the fans, fans for cooling, and obviously if you take your air conditioning out of the mix, that, that, that restricts the size of the required off grid system. Um, gas for cooking and gas hot water, um, often cooking with gas is, is, is great, I mean it is a fossil fuel but um, you know it, it, does, it does take the necessity for the, that high draw out of the um, design of, a, of an off-grid system so uh, that's one of the things that can, can make a lot of sense in terms of these sort of step changes in, in design and cost for off-grid, uh, certainly induction cooking um, can be done of course. Uh, but if you don't do it, <laughs> it helps, helps a lot in design. Uh, and it's not to say that the controller down there doesn't have quite a lot of capacity in it. Um, it's probably the case that system is well set up um, for Paul and Sharon to, to um, enhance um, the system, put some more solar on if required or some more storage if they indeed needed some air conditioning, for instance, down the track. The controller is in place, it'll handle those loads and probably the system as it is right now probably would be able to handle it quite well. Um, but it can easily be expanded upon and that's the benefit of lithium and we left a nice little section on the bottom of the, uh, the solar stable to fit another row of panels if needed. Yeah look I don't think we've um, we haven't really felt like we had to uh, compromise on the way we'd set the house up I mean it was just a case of making sure that we were energy conscious in the decisions that we made and uh, so um, I, I, I basically had to um, had to sell the system to um, to my wife, who uh, who asked a lot of questions about what it would uh, what it would mean, and look, there's been answers pretty well all the way through. So, um, you know, it's uh, it really is a no compromise system as far as uh, I'm concerned. A robust process <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a no compromise outcome, which is really really good. So obviously, you had to, you just were visited by the beautiful horse there. What was it, what's her name? Um, that one's Logan, and um, she's a, um, a four year old halflinger mare. We uh, we breed it. Um, Halflinger horses on right. this property, and uh, apart from the um, uh, all of the equestrian sporting stuff that we we do, um, well, we're also a horse breeder, and we've been doing that for um, gee, almost thirty years now. So um, it's um, they're as much part of the family as uh, as anyone. Logan's coming back. She's quite interested in this new off grid system. <laughs> she is. She hasn't seen the door open in there um, uh, very often, so it's. Um, one of the first things she's found to come around and uh, wonder whether there's any um, hay or something uh, a little bit interesting in she's there for her. She's a beautiful, her, beautiful creature. Come, come in close and have a visit. She really is very friendly, very well-natured horse, aren't they? Yeah, she's uh, she's one of my favourites, I'd have to say. Um, she's in foal at the moment. Um, How long before she has a foal? Uh, probably towards the end of the year now. Um, so I haven't seen them much before yeah there's um there's not a huge number of them in uh, in australia but um they'd um they'd probably be around about uh 500 and it's mostly um mostly around the hunter valley area and then um down in victoria they're they're quite um quite popular um so um they uh they, they're kind of distinctive obviously with the blonde mm. um, mane and tail very surfy isn't it i was just thinking <laughs> well we're going to head back over and have a look at some of the event that's going on today um, it's a uh, quite exciting uh, weekend up here for you guys and we'll have a look at that is this an annual event no we well this particular event yes it's annual because this is um, what we call jump in the vines and that's a once a year thing uh, that's a two-day 
um, full-on weekend for us and um, but we we probably have up to about half a dozen um, training days um, or training events throughout the year okay um, so this is the pinnick so jump in the vines uh, sounds pretty good you've got the good, the good name there yeah we um, we also have something called spring in the vine so it's all sort of um, plays off the uh, the jumping theme because we uh, we do uh, show jumping and um, uh, cross-country um, eventing is the two primary things that we focus on and uh, we've been doing that for about the last uh, eight years so and we're well into it now and so this is training it's going on in the background at the moment so you have some trainers come in and your people book in to come to the event yeah this area is really um, blessed with um, um, really experienced trainers and uh, so we bring in a um, usually a trainer that does cross country and one that does show jumping. Uh, sometimes they can do both, of course. Um, but there's some real world-class um, uh, eventers in this area. And uh, so um, it's, um, they seem to enjoy coming here and we, uh, we love uh, running these sorts of events. And uh, we put on a, um, uh, a significant lunch and uh, those that stay for dinner get to camp and uh, partake in a bit of a uh, Bit of the local uh, wine, wine after uh, after days. <laughs> Are they your, your your wines coming off the vineyard? Yeah, we um, we put in a, a small vineyard um, uh, about uh, twelve years ago, and uh, we've got Sangiovese um, uh, grapes, and uh, at the moment it's drinking pretty well. So, nice. but, uh, so it's going to be a good, good little shindig tonight. Do you think? I think there will be a few. Yeah, <laughs> horse horse people love a uh, love a drink at the end of the day. So this. Uh, big long paddock behind us where there's some more training going on so wh what do we call this is it, is it an equestrian paddock or is it a sh show jumping paddock or yeah we call that set our, up really nicely yeah that's a that's our cross country, cross -country um, paddock yeah. and it's um it's i guess it's reasonably densely packed with um with um jumps um my wife can't help herself but uh making <laughs> jumps <laughs> and uh yeah look i think there's around uh close to 80 across um uh, the uh, the paddock it goes um, down along the creek line for about a kilometre and a half and there's all sorts of jumps from uh, from beginners up to quite advanced um, right. jumps. And so is this event open every year to to anyone the public they can book in or is it sort of a, you got to be a member or how how does it work? Um, well we do have um, we do have membership to the club but that's um, uh, that's that's really no restriction most of the people are um, equestrian Australia members okay. um, which um, which is like the umbrella organization which most uh, vendors belong and it, yes it's open to the public so we okay. um, we put the event up on our website and through um, a website called nominate and, uh, and people um, people sign up someone well. was lucky enough to score the off-grid off-grid house yes well we um, we've had some people that have been coming here for a couple of years and uh, and so we said to them well look um, You've been um, people that have pretty uh, consistently booked the tents, so we're, we'll, we'll give you we'll a an upgrade. Uh, courtesy <laughs> upgrade to uh, to try out the off-grid house. And this is they're really the first people that have overnighted in the um, facility. So well, there you go, and it performed well. They ran the oven and did a whole bunch of stuff, and we were only at eighty percent in the morning. Yeah, look, uh, all looking good, and um, and they were um, they were very happy with the uh, the um, the first night. So if you're into wines. And you're into horses, keep an eye out, jump in the vines. It's a great event, Easter weekend. And uh, it's a sparkling weekend here this weekend, been very lucky. And it's uh, just absolutely beautiful. So um, get it, get along and book it in. But uh, thanks for having us around and uh, introducing us to Logan and uh, showing us around your off-grid system. Yeah, it doesn't look like we had much option whether she was going to be part of this or not. She's, uh, <laughs> she's insisted on being a uh, part of the show, haven't you? Well, it's good to create another piece of off-grid earth and um, welcome to that world. You won't want to go back, that's for sure. Not getting no. a power bill or something else. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's the end of our little trip out here to uh, Fernances Creek today. And um, we'll say over and out from off-grid earth.